Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of Get Out and Do Something. I'm semi-retired Bob, and today we're not actually going to get out and do something. We're going to just sit here and talk for a few minutes about stress. How can we get rid of some of the biggest stress in our life? Now, of course, m most people would say the biggest stress in their life is money. Well, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about your money problems. Um, that's not why we're here today. Um... I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the biggest stress point in somebody's life that you can do something about today. And that's the stress of your morning commute. Driving in traffic. Heavy traffic. Um, it's tough. It can be really tough, especially if you live in a big city. Let's take a quick look at some facts. According to Google, the average commute for people in this country is 16 miles. Now, if you travel that 16 miles at 35 miles an hour, it's going to take you a little over 27 minutes. If you travel that 16 miles at 45 miles per hour, it's only going to take you a little over 21 minutes. And if you go blazing fast down the city streets at 55 miles an hour, you can do it in 17 and a half minutes. Pretty good. But is it really worth the stress in your life to drive that fast in rush hour traffic? Because let's be realistic. By the time you run into a couple of traffic jams here and there, even the small ones that don't last very long, you're never going to average 55 all the way to work. Even if you have highway the whole way. It's just not going to happen. Um, so let's look at the difference between 35 and 45 miles an hour. We're talking about five minutes. Five minutes. That's all. Now, is that five minutes really worth all the stress of tailgating, weaving in and out, and doing all the other stuff that people do in rush hour traffic? I don't think so. So tip one for eliminating the stress of your morning commute is leave home five minutes earlier. That's all it takes. Just leave home five minutes earlier and you can drive 35 instead of 45. You don't have to worry about it. Take that little extra time. Enjoy the ride. Tip number two, of course, obey the traffic laws. Don't speed. Don't weave in and out of traffic. Don't tailgate people. Most important thing, stay off your cell phone. There is nothing that's that important that you can't wait until you get to where you're going to check your messages or your email or whatever it is you're checking on your cell phone. Um, one of the things I used to tell my dispatcher when I was driving, you know, she's like, oh, you really need to hurry up. We got to get there. We got to get there. I'm like, uh, we're hauling fertilizer and seed. If it's five minutes late getting to the farmer, I don't think he's going to complain too loudly. It's not like I'm, you know, hauling organs for transplant. If you're hauling organs for transplant, forget everything I'm telling you here. Get there, get it done, save somebody's life. Way to go, good job. But if you're not doing organ transplants, you, it's really not that important if you're five minutes late. So slow down and take it easy. Stay off your cell phone. Tip number three, stay in your lane. You see these guys out there and gals every morning. They see the left lanes moving a little quicker, so they move over. And they zoom up three or four cars, and then they cut back in. And then they zip back out again and go around a couple more cars, and then they cut back in. They go across lanes and back lanes, and in and out and in and out. And every time you change lane, you create the possibility of an accident. Maybe it's not you, maybe you don't actually hit somebody, but you're cutting in and out in front of somebody that may be not as comfortable a driver as you are, and now all of a sudden they see you cut in in front of them, they hit their brakes to make sure they don't hit you, and the person that was tailgating behind them hits them, and now all of a sudden we've got to back up on the freeway because there was an accident. You weren't involved in it, but it was your fault. So just pick a lane and stay there. When you get close to where you're going to know you're going to get off, 
then move over and get off. It's not like they moved the exit since yesterday. It didn't suddenly show up. You know, the, the exit that you get off of to go to work shouldn't surprise you. The exit's been in the same place for at least a day, probably years. So just relax, stay in your lane. If traffic slows down, slow down with it. Keep your assured, clear distance. Now, you know, a lot of these tips you've heard many, many times before. I think it's just a good idea to refresh what we think about driving every once in a while. Because it is dangerous if you're not paying attention. Tip number four, let people merge. You know, um, as one of the YouTube creators I follow says a lot of times, don't be a dick. I understand you've been waiting in line to get off at that next exit and or you've been waiting for a big merge to happen and you're getting impatient and some Yahoo decides that they don't have to get in line with everybody else and they go zipping around everybody on the shoulder and then they try to muscle their way back in or do something else that's stupid. I know it, it's, it's a bother, but just back off a little bit and let them in because you never know what they're going to do. And if they end up hitting you, now you're in an accident. Now you're causing backups for yourself and everybody else. You're going to be late for work. All the stuff that goes with it, just relax, back off, and let them in. And, you know, somewhere down the line, they're going to get their due for being a dick. Don't you be a dick, too. Tune your radio. Tip number five, tune your radio to a station that has traffic reports. Or, if you like listening to something else, there are plenty of apps for your phone. I'm not saying pick up the phone and look at it. But there are plenty of apps that will give you alerts audibly to let you know what the traffic is doing ahead of you. And if you can avoid the biggest problems on your morning commute, you know, yeah, the jumping on the freeway and driving all the way downtown, as long as traffic keeps moving, is definitely the fastest way to get there. But is it faster if traffic suddenly backs up for 45 minutes and you can't get anywhere? Or if you had known about it, you could have gotten off three exits back and trundled up through town. Yeah, you got to stop at every traffic light going through town, but you're moving. It'll keep your mood better, keep your stress level down. Still probably going to take you a little more time to get to work, but you're not just stuck sitting in traffic somewhere. And this is all about reducing the stress of that morning commute so that you arrive at work without all the headaches of the stress. Because stress will kill you. Believe me, I know, stress will kill you. So just relax, and if you get a traffic alert that there's a backup ahead of you, get off the freeway and travel up the city streets. Now let's take a few minutes, tip number six. This is it. Let's talk about construction zones. I know construction zones are a pain in the butt. Everybody hates them, but they are everywhere. Now, I know sometimes you're driving through a construction zone and you see that speed limit 35 or speed limit 45 sign and you think, gosh, what is with this? Why am I being forced to drive so slow? There's plenty of space here to go. Well, put yourself in the construction worker's sh shoes for a minute. You might not like sitting in traffic for five minutes, but they've been out there standing on the asphalt or standing on the concrete in the hot sun all day. They're getting tired, they're maybe not paying as much attention as they should, or whatever, they stumble, they trip, they fall out into the traffic lane, and because you weren't going slow enough, you hit them, and now we've got another backup on the highway, as well as the guy may not be going home to see his family because you hit him with your car. So <clears throat> just slow down in the construction lanes, take it easy, Laugh at people that get mad because they're right up behind you and honking their horn because you're not going as fast as they think you should be. Just ignore those people or laugh at them for being in such a hurry. Because you're not in a hurry. You left five minutes earlier. You're having a stress-free drive to work. You're doing everything correctly. Let's talk real quick about the shoe flies that go with construction zones. Those are the temporary lanes that they put in to move you off to the side so that... 
they can work on the main section road. You have to be real careful with these shoe flies. Now, if you've ever noticed after a rain, if you're going down the highway, almost as soon as it stops raining, the highway's dry. The water all drains off and it's out of your way because highways are highly engineered. They're designed to shed water and make it easier for you to drive on them. The shoe flies, on the other hand, are just pieces of lane that have been stuck there temporarily and they're not engineered at all they're just stuck there so water can collect them you can have puddles you can have low spots high spots it can be wobbly all sorts of things can go wrong in a shoe fly so if the weather is bad if the speed limit sign on the shoe fly says 45 you better slow down to 35 or 40 because if there's a bad section of that shoe fly with some water standing in it, it can really mess you up and send you for a tailspin. So just be really, really careful when driving through construction zones, especially on the shoe flies, and always keep your eyes open for the construction worker. Um, one little quick story about, you know, being alert and knowing what you're doing. I was, kind of, I was driving... I was north of Chicago up in Wisconsin somewhere coming south trying to get into Chicago and it was snowing like crazy. There was snow all over the road. I was in the middle lane because there were just two little tracks of almost clear in the middle. and uh, But everything else was completely snow covered. I mean there was six, eight inches of snow all over the road except these two tracks I was driving in. And I saw lights coming up behind me. and. This guy jumped on his CB radio and said, come on, driver, it's not that slick out here, let's go. And I got back on the radio and said, hey, you know, there's a lane to the left and a lane to the right. You're welcome to go around. If it'll help you all slow down a little more so you don't have to be out there as long to get around me. Uh, he didn't answer me. He just jumped out of the left-hand lane, went zipping by me. And as he went to come back to the right-hand lane, to the lane I was in, his truck just kept riding on going, slid all the way over, slammed into a bridge abutment, and he was done for the night. I did pull over, stop, make sure he was okay. What I really wanted to say is now how fast do you get in there, driver? But I didn't. I was being nice. So just take your time. Take it easy. Pay attention to weather. Pay attention to construction. Stay off your cell phone. Leave a little early. And just don't be a dick. And that will take all the stress out of your drive to work. I hope that this has been a little bit of help to you because I've decided that with these videos I'm doing if I can reach just one person watches one of my videos and their day is a little better because of what they watched in one of my videos then this is all worthwhile. Um, click all the little buttons around the screen if you liked what you saw here today click the like click the subscribe after you hit subscribe, hit the little bell next to it so you know when I've got something coming out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.